There are three main skills needed in order to sew almost every pattern for stretchy knit fabrics out there. Seams, hemming, and bands and cuffs. Today we're going to focus on bands and cuffs. If you need help with seams or hemming, I've linked some videos down in the description. With these three skills, you could easily sew yourself an entire wardrobe full of comfy and cute clothes. So let's get started. The most common type of band that you'll come across is a neckband. But this same technique can also be used for armbands on sleeveless tops, as well as waistbands on a sweatshirt or sweater or something like that. Cuffs are essentially the same technique as well, but they look a little different just because they're wider. So the first step of sewing a neckband is to take your band and put the short end right sides together and sew it. You can do this on a serger or you can do it on a sewing machine. Personally, I prefer to do it on a sewing machine mainly because it's far less bulky if you put the seam allowance away from each other and then fold it like this. But if you use a serger, the other thing that you can do is clip your seam allowance in the center just up to the left needle stitching line and then you can turn it either direction and that will reduce your bulk as well. You'll have half of the seam on one side and half on the other side and fold it together. So as I've already indicated, the next step is actually to fold your band wrong sides together and you're going to mark it with a clip or a pin. You're going to fold the entire length of the band wrong sides together to form this loop with the raw, raw edges aligned. Then you're going to divide this entire band into quarters. So you want clips or pins at evenly spaced markings. So after this one at the seam, you can place your next one exactly opposite to the first one. And then place your original two markings together and that will give you the halfway point between them. And do the same on the other side to get your quarters. Now you've got a band evenly divided into quarters. Your next step is to take your neck hole and divide this into quarters as well. So first you want to find the center back and the center front. So you can do this by folding it, matching up your shoulder seams. These are raglan shoulder seams, but it can be done with a regular shoulder seam as well. Mark your center front. and your center back. And then just like the band, you're gonna match up your front, center front and back and find the halfway point in between those. So there you've got your neck hole divided into quarters. The next step is to take your band and match up those quarter points. So start with your seam at the back and match it right sides together with your neckline. And then do the same for the front and the sides. When you do this with a set in sleeve, it will look more like this. Some tutorials will tell you to use the shoulder seam as a quartering point, but this doesn't work unless the neckline is quite high cut. Because with a lowered neckline, you're going to be stretching the band too much along the front and it will pucker. Now, as you're going to notice, I have the shirt inside out and I've put the band on the inside of the neck hole. Many patterns will instruct you to do it the opposite way, having the shirt right side out and putting the band around the outside of the neck hole. This is essentially the same thing, it's just a matter of preference. Personally, I find it easier to sew my neckband when it's on the inside of the neck hole because when it's on the outside, then the shirt tends to get bunched up inside the neck hole because the neckband is smaller than the shirt. So I just find this easier. Now for someone familiar with neckbands, at this point it would be pretty easy to just sew this, stretching the neckband gently to match the size of the neck hole, 
with just this, this amount of pins, four pins. But for beginners, I really recommend adding another pin or clip in between so that you've got eight total. So you're gonna to wanna to stretch it gently so that it matches, and then just stick a pin or clip in the middle. Again, stretch it gently so that the length matches, stick another pin or clip in the middle, and do the same all the way around. There we go. You can see how this would be easier to work with. It's not going to move around as much. Now my next tip for beginners, and probably the most important, is going to be to baste your neckband on first. When you sew a neckband or an armband or a waistband on, like I mentioned before, you're gonna to have to stretch gently so that the band is the same length as the neckline. And you're gonna to have to do this while you sew. It's far easier to control this on a sewing machine than it is on a serger, if you're using a serger. You don't need a serger to sew with knits though. And if you make a mistake, it's way easier to take out the stitches and start again if you use a basing stitch to start with. There are a few common mistakes that get made with neckbands. One of them is using the shoulder seams as a quarter point, so they end up bunchy in front and too long in back. Another common mistake is placing the band against the wrong side of the fabric, which would end up with the seam being on the outside instead of on the inside of the shirt. And trust me, when those things happen, it is way easier to take out a basting stitch than a surged seam or a stretch stitch on a sewing machine. I also just wanted to talk a little about where to place the seam in the band. So as you noticed on this shirt, I placed the seam in the neckband at the center back. However, on a lot of store-bought shirts, they actually place the seam at the shoulder seam instead of at the center back. Personally, I prefer it at the center back simply because I find it more symmetrical. I don't like having the seam on one side and not the other. Also, it's much easier to match up. If you put the seam on one side, then you can't use the center back and center front as references, so you're just gonna have to fold and find the opposite point from the shoulder seam and so on and so forth. It's a little more complex. And then one other reason I like to do it that way is that it makes it easier to see at a glance which side is the back, especially for my kids who don't pay too much attention to the fact that the front of the neckline is lower than the back of the neckline. Now for armbands, you would want to place the seam at the bottom of the armhole, but otherwise you're dividing the armhole up in exactly the same way as the neck hole. And for waistbands, some waistbands will have one seam and typically I would put that on the side then, not at the back, just because the waistband is a lot longer so it's going to be a little more obvious on the back that there's a seam there. So you can put the seam on one side or there are a lot of patterns that have waistbands that have a seam on both sides. So you would have to sew two seams to put the waistband together and then fold it and do everything exactly the same way. So now let's look at a cuff. The main difference with a cuff is that the end that you're sewing together is not necessarily going to be the shortest end. So you're gonna to want to make sure that you're sewing the side seam. So your grain in your fabric should be running up and down and make sure then that you're cutting it correctly with the grain line in the correct direction when you cut the fabric. And then you're sewing the side together. From there, it's pretty much exactly the same as a neckband. You're just going to fold it wrong sides together, matching that seam up. and fold it in. Get your raw edges aligned. And then place a pin or a clip exactly opposite the seam. So with a cuff, you're gonna want that seam to line up with the sleeve seam. So you've got a seam here, so you're gonna stick it in the end. There's the shirt, there's the seam. So you're going to open this end and you've got the, the sleeve inside out. Slip the cuff inside, lining up that seam. And then I find that two is really all you usually need for a cuff because you can just stretch the cuff to match and then put that clip in. So now you can just 
sew it all the way around and then flip your cuff out and it's done. So as I mentioned, when you're doing the sewing, you'll have to stretch the band gently to match the size of the neckline. And I find this easiest to do with the band facing up. So you want to place the shirt facing down on your sewing machine and the band facing up. And then that way you can easily stretch the band just until it matches the neckline. And here we go. The neckline is complete, needs a press and a top stitch. And the cuffs are complete as well. If you don't have a serger, then you may want to consider finishing this seam because it will be visible at the back of your shirt when it's hanging on a hanger or such. But it really isn't necessary as knits don't fray and no one's going to see it when it's actually on your body. If you do want to finish that seam, you can use a zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch on your sewing machine. So top stitching is optional. I do prefer to top stitch. When I first started sewing knits though, I did not top stitch. This one is top stitched. It's something that can take a little practice to be able to do without stretching your neckline out of shape as you are top stitching. You have to have your settings just right on your sewing machine, which can take some playing around to find the right stitch that you like to use and presser foot pressure and all of that. So I just wanted to give you a quick example of a neckband that I haven't top stitched. And I wear this regularly and keep forgetting to top stitch it. I would like it better. It would sit smoother. It kind of it kind of raises up a little. But as you can see, it's not really that easy to tell and it's not enough of an issue that it's prevented me from wearing it at all. So top stitching is optional. And personally, I would prefer a neckband like this over one that's stretched out of shape if you're having trouble top stitching it without stretching it out of shape. So as I mentioned, seams, hemming, and bands or cuffs are the most common things that you'll need in order to sew knit fabrics. There are a few other techniques that are less common, such as binding or special types of neckbands like a V neck band. And I'm going to be creating some videos on those as well. So if you want to make sure that you get notified when those videos are published, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.